Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing the new Back for Blood DLC, Tunnels of Terror, where you will now be tasked with defeating all new infected, along with entering their dangerous hives. The first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Tunnels of Terror is currently in full release and available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation for $15. So what exactly is the DLC? Well, Tunnels of Terror adds plenty of new content and exciting new changes to the game. But first up, let's just clarify some things with what the DLC actually includes. There are several new cosmetics, legendary weapons, special infected, two new cleaners, new cards, and of course, the new infected hives. The best part about all of this, of course, is that only one player in your party needs to have the DLC in order for everyone to play it. It is worth mentioning though that only the owners of the DLC will have access to the new cleaners. The two new cleaners introduced in Back for Blood are Hang and Sharice. Hang's unique ability gives him and his team a 5% chance to be able to reuse any accessories that they happen to use along the way. He also has a 5% chance to produce an accessory when being hit by anything that is mutated. And he has the ability to see things like the new tunnel entrances through the walls so that he can find them easier. While all of this is certainly nothing to scoff at, I think the other new character is arguably quite a bit better. Now, Sharice will give your whole team 20% bolstered HP and the chance to produce a new item introduced with the DLC called Makeshift Armor that will have a chance to drop off any infected with armor, such as SWAT zombies and armored infected. Each piece of Makeshift Armor will absorb one hit from a heavy attack, such as the explosion or slam that special infected can cause. This essentially makes those things do zero damage to you, which can be incredibly valuable. It is worth mentioning that this armor can still be found randomly in the world, but it has a rather low spawn rate. Now there are several new cards and cosmetics, but I don't want to spoil too many of those for you, so I'll just explain how you actually get them. First off, you will have to get a fair amount of this new currency, which is called Skull Totems, and can only be found inside the hives. These must then be carried by a player throughout the hive until you leave and exit them. There are usually going to be three of them in your hive, however, one person can carry all three of them by fusing them to the same weapon so that you don't have to have three people using only a melee weapon throughout the entire hive. Once you finish the hive with as many totems as possible, you will then be awarded with the amount of skull totems equal to the amount that you were able to extract with. Generally, the new cards and cosmetics are going to cost you somewhere between one and three skulls, but of course this may vary a bit as you get to some of the different and later game ones. Hives, however, have a lot more to offer than simply just being skull totem farms, so even after you unlock all the new cosmetics and all the cards, you're still probably going to want to drop by them from time to time. Some of the rewards found in them include the new legendary weapons. Again, I don't want to spoil them all for you, but essentially the way that they work is that they have a special trait and usually can't have any attachments changed on them. For an example, there's an auto shotgun one, which cosmetically looks absolutely amazing as the back of your sights is a gargoyle, but also has the special trait of making any enemy that you hit become on fire for three seconds and take 50 damage per second. Another one was a pistol that gave you three copper per normal infected kill and 10 copper per special infected kill. All in all, these were some seriously awesome legendary weapons that act as a great reason for you to do these hives even after you've gotten all the cards and special cosmetics that you want to unlock with the skull totems. The hives also have their own special twists up their sleeve though to add a unique twist to the gameplay while you're in them. For an example, there are several different layouts and spawn points for skull totems throughout them. This makes it so it won't be so easy to memorize the absolute best path like you would be able to in a normal level. They also have special cards, such as the one where you had to manage an oxygen meter by running to oxygen generators placed throughout the cave system. And if that oxygen meter falls too low, well, you would just start to suffer the consequences rather quickly. There are also several other variants that you can encounter in these hives, but I'll leave that for you to discover. Now before we move on, let's talk about the new special infected types. You see, each major special infected now has a new variant. For the tall boys, you have the Ripper, which gives him sort of a ranged attack that shoots in a line on the ground. The Reekers get the Shredder, which allows him to pull all enemies in a certain radius towards himself. And the Stingers get the Urchin, which gives him the ability to shoot a bouncing projectile that acts kind of like a trap. Each one of these adds a little bit of extra flavor to the gameplay that definitely helps to keep things fresh. 
So now let's jump on over to the pros and cons section for the video. First up for the pros is that there are plenty of new mechanics such as bolstered HP and accessory reuse chance. In case you don't know, bolstered HP kind of acts like a buffer to allow you to have more temporary HP, which adds another layer of depth to the game. After that is that hives are super fun and interesting twists to the game. They each feel unique and challenging for each difficulty in their own way. Each card that you get in a hive can completely change the way that you might try to play through it. Personally, it's a very welcome addition and a great new system overall. Another pro is the new legendary weapons, which are very exciting and keep you wanting to go back to the hives. Each time you find a legendary weapon, it feels impactful and can change the way that you might play for the rest of your run. For an example, finding the pistol that generates money per kill might make you more inclined to use it over something that might kill infected faster. And finally for the pros is the fact that you don't have to own the DLC to try it out and experience it, since you can play it as long as you have one friend in your party who owns it. While yes, you can't use the cleaners unless you own it, I think it's perfectly acceptable considering that they have to make you want the DLC for some reason. Now for the cons. First up is that there's really no new maps in, that's kind of just a bummer. Personally, I was really hoping that we would get new maps such as like an actual campaign mission or something like that with the DLC that we were purchasing. And while the hives can be considered maps, I don't think that that's what the players were really looking for when it comes to a DLC. While it is great that we actually have new additions and there's new mobs and stuff, I just don't feel like it was quite enough to warrant the price tag when we're talking about what you would expect from a $15 DLC on a AAA game. Game. And the last con I have today is that the new cleaners really just didn't feel that impactful. I mean, they're cool and all, and they have unique traits, and it definitely adds something to the game. But personally, I just don't think they were the most interesting cleaners they could have came up with when it comes to asking us to spend $15 on a DLC for these new cleaners. They definitely have their roles to play, and I can see building decks around them, but I just don't think they're worth the $15 that it would cost you if you already had a friend playing with you anyways. So now it's time for the rating for the DLC, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that we spend on the game. So for this DLC in particular, in Tunnels of Terror, we would want to get roughly 15 hours of enjoyment out of the 15 dollars that we spent. And after playing this DLC, we give it... 6 out of 10 potatoes. Tunnels of Terror was certainly a fun DLC to play, but that doesn't mean it didn't have its flaws. The harsh reality is that things are going to get relatively repetitive, just like they did before for many players. It does add some cool new additions to the game, but when compared to DLCs for other games at similar price tags, it doesn't really add nearly as much content as some of those other DLCs do. If you have a friend who has it and only intend on playing this game with that friend, then there is almost zero incentive for you to even bother purchasing it in the first place. With that being said though, it was still a really fun experience and you might get your 15 hours out of it. But if you were looking for a new campaign mission or completely new weapon types that aren't really just reskins of old ones with special abilities or extremely impactful new ridden, then I feel it's safe to say that Tunnels of Terror is a bit of a coin toss as to whether or not it's worth the cost. Before you guys go, thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more survival game content. A big shout out to all of our members and subscribers, and don't forget to check out our links in the description below for things like our music library and Epic Games Creator Code, as these are just ways for you to help support the channel. Otherwise, thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.